Hi, this is Elliot Fishman. Welcome to our December 2020 CTSS quiz. It seems like only yesterday we were doing the January 2020 CTSS quiz. So this is the last quiz for the year. We have 10 terrific cases, and let's see how good you are and how much you've learned this past year. In this case, what's the most likely diagnosis in a 30-ish year old female? You have to like the answers I gave. They're all kind of eponyms. Peanut, MCN, SPEN, and PADC. Oh yes, PADC is pancreatic adenocarcinoma, just in case you didn't know what a PADC was. Well, what we see here is a mass in the tail of the pancreas. It's cystic and it's solid and has coarse calcifications. The fact is, it's not very vascular and it could be a neuroendocrine tumor. But a 30-ish year old female, I'm going with a spend tumor, solid and papillary epithelial neoplasm, often is calcified, maybe 30%, cystic and solid, MCNs occasionally calcified, but they're more cystic, and neuroendocrine is typically more vascular. And this indeed was a spend tumor, just a terrific example. In this case, I ask, what's the most likely diagnosis? Well, there's a large cystic lesion left up a quadrant toward the left mid-abdomen. And I guess the first question you can ask is, could this be adrenal? Could this be gastric? Could this be retroperitoneum? Could this be splenic? Yes, those are all possibilities. And I gave you a few choices. I put down adrenal carcinoma. Adrenal carcinomas can be cystic, but not this cystic. Usually they're solid. And just tumors become cystic when they're treated, but not this cystic. And serous adenoma is indeed a good possibility. But what I like here is there's a solid component at about 3 o'clock, and there's septations. Remember, when you think about mucinous cystic neoplasm, it has ovarian stroma, and that's why you have septations. The solid component ended up being high-grade dysplasia with a mucinous cystic neoplasm, or MCN. Just a wonderful, wonderful example. In this case, the patient's primary diagnosis is, now, one thing you can see is the patient has cirrhosis and a big spleen. But then you look at the pancreas, and the patient's pancreas is replaced by fat. But it's diffuse fat, and you can see the mass effect of where the gland was, or the gland still is, but it's replaced by fat. When you're diabetic, you can have fatty infiltration of the pancreas, but not this really prominent fat. And this is the classic hallmark appearance of cystic fibrosis. Beautiful example of cystic fibrosis and secondary cirrhosis due to the cystic fibrosis. Just a wonderful example. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, you look at a very vascular lesion, the liver is not cirrhotic. And you could think about FNH, you could think about hepatic adenoma, hemangioma, nah. Hemangiomas get flash filling when they're small, but this is too large and very bright arterial with what looks like a pseudocapsule. You look at the venous phase, the lesion washes out, but you see the mass boundaries and you see some solid and cystic components. Again, not a hemangioma and really not good for an FNH because they're more homogeneous. I think you're stuck here between hepatic adenoma and hepatoma. The capsule to me is more hepatoma, and this the and indeed this was a hepatoma. I will say, or at least I'll mumble when I say that hepatic adenoma is a possibility, but hepatic adenoma is considered a premalignant condition and will be resected either way. So this indeed was a hepatoma. This patient has hematuria, and I'm asking what's the best diagnosis. You see at first what looks like a very vascular process in the upper pole of the right kidney. And then you realize that's what it is because you can see it on the venous phase, but it washes out. It's not a stone, it's not a tumor, and it's not neovascularity. Now, it'd be great to have other images. So it's not a renal cell, and it's obviously not a stone because it changes density. It's not a transitional cell, but this is a classic appearance of an AV fistula. AV fistulas can be due to trauma, can be due to prior procedures, can be congenital can cause hematuria and simulate a tumor. Just a very, very nice example. 
In this case, I say, what's the differential diagnosis and what does it include except for? Well, here you see a large cystic and solid mass and you're trying to figure out where is it? Is it coming from the pancreas? Is it coming from the duodenum, the retroperitoneum? Is it the mesentery? Where exactly is this thing and what is it? It's large, it's not obstructing, but it's displacing. So when you look at it, a gist tumor is a possibility. Duodenal gist can be very large. Lymphoma, I don't really like it, but lymphomas can be solid masses, but usually it's multiple masses, multiple nodes. But I guess it's a possibility. This, in fact, was a desmoid tumor. That would be a good possibility. A lymphangioma would be another thought, but a desmoid tumor is a good solid mass. What this is not is a liposarcoma. Yes, you'll say some liposarcomas have minimal fat or no fat. This has no fat. Liposarcomas are less well-defined and more infiltrating. This was a desmoid tumor, but the least likely diagnosis is a liposarcoma. This patient had metastinal widening, and I ask, what's the best diagnosis? Well, you see a mass in the AP window on the axial images that's vascular, and you see it very nicely filling in the AP window on the cinematic rendering. What are vascular masses? Well, it could be METS. Metastatic renal cell carcinoma can give you vascular nodes. You could have Castleman's disease that gives you vascular nodes. It's not an aortic aneurysm. Melanoma, the nose usually aren't that vascular in the mediastinum. This is not a location for thymoma, but you can consider a thymus or thymoma in any mediastinal mass, or at least consider it. Maybe it grows there. But this is a great location for a paraganglioma. It's an uncommon mass, but vascular, wherever they are, in the peripancreatic region, in the adrenal bed, at the organ of zircocondyl, beautiful example of a paraganglioma in the AP window classic chest location. In this case, I asked the question, what's the least likely diagnosis? Now we see a cystic lesion that's off the tail of the pancreas. Well, serous cyst adenoma, it could be. It could also be a MCN. It could be a um, IPMN. But you also need to consider lesions that are exophytic to pancreas, lymphopathelial cyst. That's a great possibility. Now, I asked what's the least likely diagnosis. I have neuroendocrine tumors here. Neuroendocrine tumors are typically vascular. They can be cystic, but when they're cystic, the rim is vascular. Here, there's nothing vascular. This, in fact, was a lymphopathelial cyst, but it could have been an MCN and it could have been a spend tumor. Sometimes spend tumors are all cystic and have no solid component. But the least likely diagnosis was a neuroendocrine tumor. In this case, what's the best diagnosis? You look at the heart on the non-contrast scans, there's some funny calcifications. And then on the flash acquisition with gating, you see a large left ventricle and thinning of the left ventricle wall. And you see how it's outpouching. And the calcifications that we described are in the wall of this process. So what are you dealing with? This is not an angiosarcoma. Angiosarcomas are tumors that grow in, most commonly from the right side of the heart. It's not an aortic dissection. And I don't see thinning of the myocardial wall. Well, I do see thinning because of this large left ventricular aneurysm, but I don't see a acute infarct. And so we're dealing with a large ventricular aneurysm, just a beautiful, beautiful example, very nicely shown. Look at the thinning of the left ventricle, look at the outpouching, look at the calcification. It's a great call if you can make it on the non-contrast scans, but just wonderful on the contrast enhanced study. Now in this case, I ask what is the likely diagnosis? Well, you look, there's something involving the lower esophagus. So you could think about hiatal hernia. You could think about a soft tissue mass there. So what occurs in the esophagus? You could have lymphoma, though it's pretty rare. Maybe it's nodes in the periesophageal region. You can have gist tumors of the esophagus. Those are soft tissue masses. You can have gist anywhere in the GI tract from stomach to esophagus to small bowel to large bowel to rectum. It could be esophageal cancer. It looks like a mass involving the esophagus. The one thing it shouldn't be is a carcinoid tumor because carcinoids are vascular. 
this lesion is not vascular. So I'm thinking um, carcinoid is the wrong answer. This ended up being a gist tumor of the esophagus. A very unusual case, but soft tissue mass, you got to think about adenocarcinoma. you got to think about gist tumor or some other possibilities. So with that, I've given you 10 absolutely terrific cases. That's 10 cases to end the year, 120 quiz cases for the year. And soon, within weeks, we're going to have the new app on the Apple Store, which will give you those 60 new cases added to the hundreds we've had previously and a whole lot of new files. And with that, I wish you a great day. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctsus.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.